The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Welcome to the Cashman Mind, Body, Spirit Show today. I think you're going to find this to be very interesting. And I will touch the subject. No way that I could study across the world uh, the school lunches. This is what the subject is all about. But I did uh, look at China, Korea, New York City, Detroit, our local area read many books. I referred a lot uh, to a book, The Labor of Lunch, by Jennifer Gaddis. I hold, hold this one up uh, f for you here. Uh, this summarizes really going back to the 20s and 30s of the last century, uh, how uh, government uh, and, and our schools uh, have try to present uh, free or supported lunches to the children from very young st uh, straight through uh, high school. It's, it's extremely complex, but I'm going to uh, go through this subject a little bit, and, and frankly, uh, what I do is try to prevent disease. That's really what I, I try to do. And at the moment, there's, there's no question is that when I look around in the city, in this nation, uh, in the world, we have a very sick world. Mm -hmm. Just look around, look around, watch people, and just your eyes will tell you that we are not uh, very healthy. But I'm doing my best to try to help us. I've written many books, TV, radio, the information that I've gathered, the YouTube shows I've done, have now actually spread to India. I got a phone call a month ago from uh, the embassy in D.C. They want to take my YouTube shows, which are about 700, <laughs> okay, and send them out. They'll, they'll translate them to the different dialects, different languages, which are many in India because they have so much diabetes. And this concerns me, um, of course, in this uh, uh, community. Uh, I even uh, wrote a book, if you look at it right here, and if I hold it up a minute, uh, it's on Amazon, Prevention is the Cure. And what, what's happened is, and you see a sad face in, in the middle of it, uh, that uh, we've been surrounded by an economic system uh, that is trying to get a as much money out of us and put people in the hospitals and the hospitals want to operate on you. But I'm about prevention is the cure. That's what I'm all about. And the school lunch program is adding to that. And I, I, uh, I have it, the different things that cause diseases, I have it on there. School lunch program, failure of public health, sugar industry, House and Senate lobbyists, Poor nutrition teaching, processed food, cow's milk, which we're going to talk about quite a bit today. And you, you see the book uh, up here, which I encourage you to read. We'll talk more about it. So uh, this is where I'm coming from. It's, a, it's an opportunity, but we must be open-minded, not get mad at anybody, and just exchange information here. Uh, and uh, so let's start on the school uh, lunch program. The federal government supports it throughout the nation, yes. Uh, and, and some people get a total lunch free, some have to 
put in a little bit of money, a little bit of uh, money. In interesting enough, New York City, where I used to live as a child, uh, the uh, mayor, Eric Adams, uh, who himself had diabetes, yeah, he get get rid of it through a way of eating, and now he has promoted it to all the schools. Interesting. A very good website. Put put in school lunches in New York City, and you'll have a tremendous amount of information. That doesn't mean that I agree with everything, but he's 80% on the path, and, uh, and I, I notice he's trying to change uh, the way the lunches are presented to the students, just the way he is eating, but uh, he didn't get the science totally correct. But it, it, it is helpful. It's very helpful, good website, uh, and I highly recommend reading his book, which I'll hold up after a little bit. So let's, let's, let's start on the road here. Uh, so uh, the National School Lunch Program really started in 1945. It's been around for a long time. The federal government has given some money towards the lunches to help for people who can't afford them at all, uh, and, and people who can partially afford them get a little bit more. But now, like in, in New York City, you can get a free breakfast, a free lunch, uh, and if you want dinner, they'll help you with it, or what, whatever your needs are, this, yes, combination of the federal government and the city are getting the, the job done. So that's, uh, uh, so, but you got to be concerned. How come our hospitals are full? We've had this program, our hospitals are, are full of people with complications of uh, type 2 diabetes, which can be avoided 90% of the time. But the type of food we're feeding the children doesn't do that. It's the wrong food. Industry get a, get a hold of the program. Uh, and they w wanted part of the pie, and they manufactured food very cheaply, not necessarily good food, gave it to the schools, and the schools gave it to the kids. Let's review some more of that, okay? So, uh, like I said, uh, so it's not just what the kids are eating, it's also the alcohol and the cigarettes and the marijuana. Um, uh, that's all part of it. And uh, so, uh, but the program was necessary with starving children. But look, what, what, what do we have now? Many overfed children. We have many obese children. Many of the children have the beginning of type 2 diabetes. Yes, that begins at a very young age, contrary to what people think. The, our medical system, and we doctors are partly responsible here, we are not testing our children uh, with blood sugars and serum insulin at a very early age, and we'd be catching them on the path to diabetes. We're not doing that, and so we, that adds to the sick nation. If you are overweight, odds are you got diabetes. Many of the children have never been tested. They don't even know they're diabetic. Mm -hmm. Many of the children, serum insulin is the answer. We should be running serum insulin on children starting at age three. And if you w want to read about the science of it, it's Joseph Kraft, K-R-A-F-T. You can see him on YouTube. He's talking to an obesity doctor. He was 96 then, and he's died since. He says, I'll be looking down up upon you before the nation changes. He's obviously right, and I suspect he's looking at me uh, right now uh, because I'm doing what, what he was doing for years. Uh, so th the federal program, remember, to help pay for school lunches, was set up uh, by partly by big food companies, yes. And they were able to produce cheap food they freeze it right away, and the kids get it in a package, and, and, and they eat it. A lot of the food has been processed. Nutrients have been removed. Uh, and uh, and a, a big one, when I look at all these websites, and I even look at New York, New York City, uh, I, I notice when I look at the website for, for lunches for South Korea, which has really the best program, no milk allowed. Part of that is 
Asians don't have the lactose enzyme that digests milk. So let's take a minute now and, and discuss this book here, Whitewash, Whitewash by Joe Keon. Whitewash by Joe Keon. I really like it. If you would go to the library or online and, and buy this book and read it. I read it a number of years ago. I've read it a number of times since. I've had TV shows on it. And, and milk uh, is really not fit for human consumption. If you, a, a, every veterinarian knows that if you take the milk of one species and give it to another, that species will die. That's true in all animals. Yeah. They, they, they don't do that. We humans uh, become sick. Some indeed do die, but, but some, uh, like myself, I'm lactose intolerant. Nature designed it as such that we can't digest milk very well after age four. That's in evolution. And, and I'm lactose intolerant. If I were to go to a restaurant, uh, and order a piece of pie with uh, sugar products uh, in them, I will have terrible abdominal pain uh, in about two hours, very predictable. I stopped eating it and, and those symptoms went away. Uh, so Asians don't tolerate milk at all, so they don't even drink it, okay? So when, when, if you look at the, at the lunches uh, for South Koreans, which has been voted the best school lunch in the world, mm -hmm. and I look on there, uh, no milk on there, and I think that must be the reason. But there can be I mean, other reasons too, which I'll tell you more about in, uh, uh, in a minute. I notice also that uh, they uh, not eating that much rice. They'll have some soups, but they're not eating that much that much rice. Uh, but some in rice, and and they list it uh, as a carbohydrate. So when, when I uh, look at these websites of foreign countries, they're listed as a, carbo as a carbohydrate, that, and they'll say zero sugar. Well, I checked out the science, and, and if you go down and, and, and scroll way down, you find out, uh, find that they say zero, uh, zero sugar, but and, and you, you, I have found out by going on the internet further that rice is seventy percent broken down into sugar, mm -hmm. and if you're diabetic, your blood sugar goes up. So rice is not a health food. I don't eat any rice because I'm a, I read that I think years ago. Uh, 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 and uh, I looked it up here again, it's 70% rice, it's 70% sugar. So if you're gonna serve it to breakfast to children, you need to count that as sugar. Mm. It's an interesting. Let's talk about uh, milk here a, a little bit. When a calf is born, they inject it with a hormone made by Eli Lilly, they sold the, that company that makes that sense. They called it a different name because they were kind of ashamed to be associated with it, or I don't know the reason. Uh, they had a separate company, separate name. Uh, and as soon as, what it is, is growth hormone. As soon as the calf is born, they inject it with growth hormone. Hmm? Why is that? So that little calf will grow quickly and produce more milk. And then your child drinks it, and your child is getting growth hormone. And then they put the cow in a cage and they put herbicides and pesticides and hormones uh, on, onto the cow to, to uh, keep it healthy so he doesn't die. He can keep it producing 10 times as milk, as more milk than it usually would so they can make money. Then you give your child the milk full of hormones, pesticides, growth hormones, 58 different chemicals. So when these lunch programs, like in Fort Wayne, okay, um, uh, and uh, in New York City, you give them milk, 
you're giving your kids all those hormones uh, and that changes their menstrual cycle so they, because of estrogen uh, and they uh, w uh, will have a longer period of time that they menstruate which increases the cancer rates. Uh, milk is also, also associated with increased rates of breast cancer and, and, and no wonder. Uh, it, it's a great cause of obesity and, and when you take the milk, like in our local s school program or some of the other cities uh, like Detroit, New York, uh, uh, that uh, is free. You get the food you get, and I'll give you a demonstration of that in a minute here. It's free, but if you want a bottle of water, it's a buck and a half a bottle. So who do you think is influencing who here? I suspect the milk industry is giving a lot of money to these organizations so that the kids will be drinking milk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with the milk, remember every species, 5,400 species, has different carbohydrates, proteins, and fats in them, every species. That's a, uh, uh, milk has a lot more fat than human milk, for example, and it's not necessarily a good fat. In lactose, it has casein, a, a protein, which are many allergies are associated with it. You, your kids drink milk, much higher rates of ear infections, asthma, mm -hmm, allergic reactions, sensitivities, a great deal. I remember one of my yoga instructors had three kids that were always had ear infections, asthma, and always uh, having these these attacks, and I told her I was reading this at that time. I told her stop giving them milk, and guess what happened? It all cleared up. That's in this book. That's in this book, and uh, and, and uh, so allergies, um, uh, asthma, increased rates of cancer, breast cancer rates are up. So when Vera Bradley take, collects all this money from the people of Fort Wayne and sends it for genetic research, it takes about sixty different drugs that would help breast cancer because the 60 different genes cause breast cancer. Okay, not one. A couple of cancers, there's one gene, one cancer, one drug, and it's gone, but not breast cancer. So they should have kept some of the money here, I think, uh, to teach people about proper eating, and the breast cancer rate would go down. I tell people that all, all the time. And, uh, uh, and, and it's, it's interesting. So uh, I told you about the IGF hormone in uh, breast cancer, and that's the hormone that's injected in a baby cow. The day it's born, the day it's born, so you, so you need to um, know about these things. And there's a great deal of contamination of cow's milk. John McDougall said that is one thing dairy products have more than any other food I can think of, it's contamination. And, and you make your child drink it. I don't drink milk, I haven't for years. I used to years ago. And I had acne and all kinds of skin allergies because my dad's deli in New York. I had to drink milk every day. Well, come to find out that was a mistake. So I encourage you to uh, read Whitewash. I, I think it's, if you're a parent, I, I beg you, to read this, you can also go uh, onto YouTube uh, and uh, Dr. Rudy Cashman uh, YouTube whitewash. A, a show will show up an hour long where I speak uh, more about it. I think I think it is very very important. So let let's go on and uh, uh, the. Uh, National Student Lunch Program, which remember, across, across the nation, supported by the federal government, uh, has always a government program, but private companies always try to invade it uh, to make money. And uh, so th the trouble is partly is in a school lunch program, there's a lot of uh, commercial companies want to come in. A lot of uh, congressmen are being bribed. Mm -hmm, that's true. 
And uh, so there's lack of uh, uh, knowledge. And uh, to me, if we're going to change the health problems we're having in this nation, in this book of mine, it really points them out, that 90% of the diabetes and its diseases that are laying around in these hospitals now could be prevented. Even the med school, I notice, is moving onto the, onto the Parfue uh, uh, campus um, uh, and, and other universities that I've spoken to are doing the same thing. They're all forming a circle around the patient. But, it's, but if we get to the high school kids and gave them the right food and, and taught them something, I, I think if we can somehow figure out that, that we need to get back to teaching kids in the high school how to cook mm -hmm. and start very early, very early, and make them cook in foods that are healthy, that maybe plant their own garden or connect them to the farmers that live in the surrounding uh, uh, counties. Uh, and, and, and these children, we could, they would socialize with each other. We could uh, teach them to, when they wake up, to wake up with a smile on their face or sing a song to make them different children. I even, uh, and I, I bring it up a little later, wrote the 20 prescriptions that lead to good life. And while we have them in the school there, we'll teach them uh, about behavior, respect the environment, treat others you like to be treated. Say, each lunch line, just one of the 20. And the time they get done, they know a code of behavior. Maybe we'd have less drug addiction, less cigarette smoking, less marijuana, for, for, for example. And one that uh, concerns me a great deal, and I put it uh, Right out of books, and Lexa even said so. Two out of five girls are pregnant before they graduate from high school. Two out of five, yes. And that's a great concern uh, because when a child is born, it it has only five percent of its genetic script written. 5%. 95% is determined by what the mother and partly the father do, whether the organ or the bringing in music affects the genetic script of the infant in the uterus. The ear is the first organ to develop at three months. The child can hear, whether the organ or, or singing songs or, or dancing uh, uh, movement uh, it's occurring, you're writing the genetic script of the infant. Uh, and as the other organs develop, they are affected by what the mother is eating. So she's, and the movements that occur, whether she's walking or, 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 or singing or playing music, they all affect the genetic script of the infant. It's like the Mozart effect. Mm -hmm. Listen to a certain kind of music affects the child. You're writing the genetic trick. So what the mother is, is eating, say even at the school level, she's remember two out of five get pregnant and they are still in school, and yet the schools, uh, uh, the majority of them are not feeding them very good food. Let me I mean, you can print off the internet the school lunch program actually <laughs> across the world. I look today at what they feed them in South Korea in New York City. I did before uh, in Detroit. I just want to review it uh, for this program. But let me show you in February 2023, I printed right off the internet in Fort Wayne in the Southwest Allen County School Elementary Schools. For, for breakfast on the 6th, they had a jumbo cinnamon roll. I wouldn't eat a cinnamon roll. It's too much sugar. Yet they're feeding it to the very young children in the elementary school. In the elementary school. The brain is not really fully developed till age 25 or so. Mm -hmm. We're still growing brain, uh, brain cells. Uh, and uh, sugar is destructive to the brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll uh, affect their memory, their, their learning ability. For lunch, we're giving them pizza crunches, pizza crunches, okay? 
on the 13th, a glazed donut for breakfast. Mm -hmm. On the 14th, on Valentine's Day, apple eye uh, of cinnamon Texas toast. Mm -hmm. Lunch, sweetheart slushies, true love taters. Uh, For breakfast on, on Wednesday, we give them a muffin and some yogurt. Lunch, a corn dog. Breakfast on Thursday, Cinefield Square. For lunch, stuffed crust pizza. Breakfast on Friday, a cereal bowl. Okay. Today, they, for breakfast, they gave mini pancakes. For lunch, they gave him pizza and sweet corn. Corn has fructose corn syrup in it. That's not good for you. I could go on and on. I have it all printed out here. All printed out here. What are we doing to our kids? What are we doing to them? We're harming them and we're killing some. Many will have diabetes at a very young age. Our school system instead should be used as an opportunity to socialize with them, to, to teach them how to cook, how to eat the right food, and they do it through their lifetimes. Our hospitals would have a lot less patients, but just like this book that I wrote about here, how they have, have us all, children and adults, surrounded, so we, we can't uh, escape uh, from them to make sure that we fill the hospital system where they charge a lot. It may be well run, but I've been to all three of them to try to convince them to prevent disease, to prevent diabetes, which starts at a very young age. If we did serum insulin testing on, on kids, we found that they're already uh, diabetic. Incidentally, I meant to mention that drinking milk, there's type 1 diabetes, there's type 2. Uh, Type 1, the pancreas is totally dead. We need insulin shots. But it is caused a lot of the time by the type of food. Yeah, the casein in milk will have an autoimmune reaction destroy the pancreas. So we didn't drink the milk. The pancreas wouldn't be destroyed. They wouldn't have diabetes. Yes. Yes, pediatricians start. We doctors are probably responsible, no question about it. We start checking their... Blood sugar is more at age 11 instead of earlier. Uh, Dr. Kraft's book, the one who did the research, came up with the serum insulin uh, uh, test. Uh, uh, That should be done in all children, he says, starting at age three. So blood testing is important. All children should have their blood test in a computer or maybe uh, written a book, whatever you choose, and, and have in there serum insulin. We be in, in type 1 diabetes, this reaction from milk could be stopped, and type 1 diabetes rate would go down. Type 2 diabetes, type 2, is, that's uh, 90% of it, is uh, starting to occur in children. But we're not running the right test on them, so th- those children are not aware. If you're overweight, you're probably a diabetic. 90% chance. Get a serum insulin. Serum insulin will will be elevated 10 to 20 years before the blood sugar is ever up. When the blood sugar is up, they say, oh, you're diabetic. But in this 20 years, changes are occurring in your body uh, already. The blood sugar is normal. You have no idea. You have no symptoms, but your arteries are getting uh, already arterial sclerosis in it. They proved it. Uh, in the uh, Korean and Vietnamese War. When the American soldiers died, they did autopsies, uh, and they found, uh, uh, although they seemed to be healthy, they, they found arteriosclerotic streaks all over their body, the beginning of vascular disease in the heart. Some even advanced when the soldiers and the Vietnamese and the Koreans, who were uh, eating mainly a, a, a vegetable-type diet, drinking no milk. Remember I said about uh, the, the, the milk thing? Their arteries were normal. That information's been out there for a long time, but I know there's no one springing up, and I wonder who's bribing, who's uh, bribing who, okay? And uh, so uh, uh, 
we uh, should be taking advantage of our school system and teaching us our children correctly. So uh, remember the book I held up for you, I encourage you to read, uh, I'll hold it up once more, The Labor of Lunch by J Jennifer Gaddy. I encourage you to read it because she goes uh, through the history of all this and it's brutal. It is brutal for industry try to uh, invade the system. Organizations came up to try to fight them, and it, it was not easy. And Emma Schmidley, uh, back in the 1920s, 30s, uh, she had plans and dreams, uh, uh, and and but it's sort of lost uh, to history. But she tried to uh, fight the system. Uh, then. Alice Waters in the 1980s uh, had online information, uh, some public uh, edu education, uh, uh, and she mentioned that the cafeteria, the school cafeteria, really is the heart of the school, but it isn't today. Uh, they don't uh, teach cooking there anymore, but she said that should be the heart, uh, uh, and she's calling for the ghost of Smidley, who also uh, was so, so we need to elevate uh, the status of the national lunch program, but it need but it needs to be reformed. The national uh, student lunch program is partly sold out to to industry. Uh, uh, so, uh, and we need to have free lunch and dinner for everyone, just like New York City. What Eric Adams is doing. Uh, it, it is commended. It, uh, it is commended, and uh, so there is there is a desire for a change. What, what uh, Gaddy, the lady, is talking about in the book, for seven years she went around different parts of the nation, different uh, schools, talked to industry leaders, public health leaders, to learn more about uh, the school lunch system. So her book is a, an excellent uh, summary. And I read it about three times, and I find it very helpful. And, but uh, Smitley, 20s and 30s, obviously was unsuccessful, what she had in mind. And uh, so Gaddy is trying to turn it around. And she is also considering, she is also uh, considering the workers, because the workers are underpaid. They're usually females. Uh, they, they underpay them, and she should try to uh, for them to get a fair deal, and that way they could be also could be teachers and loving and socialize uh, with the students. Uh, and uh, uh, so proper school lunches could lead to increased national standard, uh, but again, it depends on what we're recommending. They may be recommending the wrong thing, so you got to be open-minded, okay? Uh, Poor and working mothers have to turn their kids over to the school system. They, they can't afford the proper food for them. They don't have the time for that. They're dependent on the school system. So head of the school systems, the federal government, the state, state legislature, they need to step up to bat, but at the same time, they would save the nation. If we had healthier kids, we'd have healthier adults. Not as many people would be disabled, not as many people uh, uh, would die so young. So, uh, but the poor and the working class, they don't have enough uh, money to feed their own kids, so some are even starving. They're dependent on the school system. But the school system is, is feeding them the wrong stuff. The even racial difference. They'll, they'll, they'll give a, a one way of eating to one school, and then they go to the inner city, and they have another system. Is racism at work here? After me reviewing these lunches, I, I, I wonder, I think, uh, I found a, a, in the inner city system, they had a lot more soul food, uh, things that were fed uh, when Africans were still uh, slaves, yes. A lot more sugar, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so, uh, and if we had healthy kids, 
and taught them that my 20 prescriptions, which I uh, brought up, they might be buying less drugs, less alcohol, less marijuana, might be less aggressive, might be more peaceful. So the system uh, really could be changed, but you gotta be open-minded, okay? Remember, I'm about prevention. And uh, so the industry, uh, Purdue Food Services uh, was trying to make money, and I can understand that, but it's up to us to decide what we're going to buy. Uh, so it, they printed up these fancy flyers stuffed in, in bags at national meetings, and uh, th then there was formed the, the Student Nutrition Association. Well, it wasn't all students. It was sort of formed by industry, uh, but they had some good things, some bad things. Uh, uh, so uh, they produced services, and, and they were, were at a convention. They stuffed all kind of flyers into the bags of the people from the Student Nutrition Association, you know, pictures and, uh, of chicken nuggets in, shapes, in the shape of flowers or turtles to make them more attractive. But, uh, but as a chicken that was raised uh, humanely, uh, didn't have pesticides, herbicides, hormones, antibiotics in them, and then you eat the ch chicken McNugget, and your your kid uh, has these poisons in their body now. That needs to be checked. That needs to be checked. And uh, but Purdue is one of the l largest chicken suppliers, self-regulated, and we accept it blind faith as being a healthy product. How many chemicals are there? How many toxins are there? Uh, in the chicken bus, because chicken is the main meat you see throughout school lunches, as well as you see a lot of rice. But remember, I said rice, which they would say, well, it's a complex carb. It's 70% sugar. Inc increase the insulin level. And uh, that's what the is the cause of most disease. And uh, th these companies are trying, and uh, in, in our governments, uh, uh, looked at big tobacco, but but they eventually we got them. You know they lied a lot, but eventually we got them. But there was, that was only one thing: nicotine. Food is a lot more complicated. It's not as easy. Big food, food is more complex, and uh, so the children's diet continues to suffer. Uh, and I say, look at the homestead menu. I read some of it to you, but read the whole thing. Uh, read the, what they feed at the, the middle school, at, at the high school, the inner city, and compare them. And, 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 and uh, uh, to me, it's not good food. It'll make them sick. They'll eventually fill these hospitals. Some may die younger. Mm -hmm. Some will get cancer because they're eating the wrong, eating the wrong uh, uh, food. And uh, Big food went to bed. Now industry is consolidated. They have increased their power, uh, and and they have been proven to be an unreliable partner to good food. Read this book by Gaddy. Read this book. It's all in there. I could talk about it for for a month. Other associations were formed with inside that. So, uh, so Congress formed a new law that uh, 2010 Healthy Hungry Free. Kids Act, HHFKA, and uh, to better align with focus of, of good food. And uh, uh, so it tried to, and they did it to affect the enlarging nation. We were seeing a lot more obesity. Look around, look around. I went to a, a breakfast shop recently and I saw six girls sitting down, young, young girls sitting down, and you couldn't believe their size. How did it happen? I don't know. Uh, but I imagine the schools didn't teach them right, right? I mean, I'm sure the schools didn't teach them right. And, uh, and, uh, but the HHFKA did, did uh, update its school nutrition standard and place some limits on, on things, um, on refined flours and starchy vegetables and salt. Uh, then Michelle Obama came along, and the president, and I, vo I voted for them, uh, I'll admit it. Uh, and she started the Let's Move campaign, uh, uh, supplementing education that really wouldn't threaten the industry. Mm -hmm. 
Remember, he's a politician. But let's move was a good thing, but I tell you, moving more, which I do, I pay pickleball and take a walk every day, I'm, I'm, I'm moving. But that's only t maybe 20% of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the rest is what type of food are you or your child eating? That's, that's one. And uh, so the first lady, the Secretary of Agriculture, made uh, the lunch ladies happy because they were serving food on the public dime. It didn't cost anything. The, the government was paying for it, but they were serving them bad food. She didn't change the food. I was in D.C., I remember, for a National Neurosurgery Convention. I could not get to, into any government building. They were all locked. They wouldn't let me in because I just wanted to exchange, exchange um, ideas. And uh, so uh, uh, Michelle Obama, she, we moved, and we all think she did a lot of good, but I'll be honest with you, I'm ashamed to say, and when I looked around D.C. when I was there, I saw so many uh, overweight people. Uh, I ate lunch outside. Uh, it, 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 they almost grabbed my sandwiches out of my, out of, uh, my hand. So. Michelle Obama allowed industry to call the shots. I saw it in D.C. myself. And uh, the president did have a neoliberal opportunity to change things because it was affecting his race more than other people. Yes, it was. Uh, uh, and, and, it, and it's not racial. It's just type of food. Okay, But he saw it. And, uh, and I saw it when I was there as a neurosurgeon resident at Georgetown years before. I was treating so many brain hemorrhages from severe hypertension. And when I think back about it, they were all diabetics. And the information was out there already that could have been prevented, but nobody did, nobody did anything about it. So uh, the leader of the Student Nutrition Association, member which I thought was partly industry, and its friends went, went, were hard at work to dismantle key aspects of legislation that originally the Student Association had passed, which was pretty good, but that they undid it at politi political uh, uh, pressures. ConAgra, Schwann's companies, banded together to finance a coalition for a sustainable school meal program, okay? Uh, they chained Congress uh, a, and connected it to fast food so they could make money. Mm -hmm. that, that actually happened. Choices and flexibility were needed at a local level, not a, as a government mandate. We need control of it locally, but locally the people have to be knowledgeable uh, and uh, like public health. Let's look at this county, for example. We have a new public health director, okay? He's only part-time, partially, uh, partially funded, but he, he works the rest of his time in the emergency room of one of our, lo our biggest hospital system. He's part of the system. We need a public health director that is not part of the system. They've wrapped themselves around the patient and us and kept, ke they are keeping us sick. We need to undo that. So conservative media uh, joined a vendetta against Obama, Obama because they were doing this Let's Move campaign. Um, uh, and they were saying, well, he was creating a nanny state uh, approach to healthy food. But I say, look around, look around. Uh, so the SNA became the public face of the fight to retain the status quo, not to change anything, not to, ma to make us uh, healthy. And uh, uh, SNA said, President said schools was struggling and the student participation uh, was not great uh, and the co cost requirement was high and they uh, wanted the government to unmandate us to t so schools wouldn't have to follow the federal guidelines which were uh, limited. And uh, so uh, the SNA uh, really didn't accomplish much. So prevention uh, is the cure. Let's prevent these diseases. Uh, w what do I think? Uh, I, I personally uh, think 
uh, that the schools are, are the place. We need to teach the kids what good food is. We need to pay the workers properly. Uh, they can socialize and we need to teach them maybe 20 prescriptions so they don't take drugs and alcohol as much. We're creating good kids. Uh, but uh, uh, a lady named Cooper came along and, uh, and she said we should have real food cooked on site at the schools itself. Mm -hmm. Real food cooked there, but we must tell them what, obviously what to cook. And, uh, uh, and, and she calls it real food, uh, express real food, instead of national food that is flown in from uh, maybe even outside the country, maybe even outside the country because they can get it cheaper in China, for example. And uh, so what Cooper was saying, big food companies are engineering processed products to meet federal guidelines, but a chicken magnetic uh, with whole wheat breading and many other mystery ingredients on the chicken to make sure that you, you want it again. Uh, it does not result in healthy eating habits. We need to, that's the reason uh, growing the food locally, uh, that we know what's in it, uh, that is fresh, uh, and, and not companies on the outside that can put anything they want to in it, and uh, so our kids ad become addicted to it. So uh, she says scratch cooking. Right from the beginning, we know what the ingredients are in the school that should be done. Uh, real food pragmatists have embraced to start f from scratch. Instead of the unboxed, and it comes in the mail, it's in a plastic bag, they undo it. And, and many milk products are actually brought now to the schools in, in, in plastic bags. We don't know what's uh, what's in there, but if, it, if, it, if it's milk, I already told you, uh, that uh, has many hormones in it and, and it's not good for your child. You want your kid to have breast cancer, give them, give them, more, give them more milk, more cow's milk. And, uh, uh, and we already spoke about rice, that rice is 70% sugar. A lot of school lunch programs have, have rice almost on, on every dish. Rice is is not a complex food. It's 70 percent sugar. As soon as it hits the gut, it's converted to, uh, to sugar. And uh, it may be cheaper, that's why they uh, give it. And uh, uh, we, we need to focus on fresh uh, food from a garden or a farm, uh, and we need to know uh, where it came from that can, so that there are no artificial flavorings or sweetness. And uh, Time Magazine reporter looked at the California in, in 2010, and he said the food was fresh, no grease, but the scene uh, it didn't suggest it was home cooked. Vegetables had already been chopped, produce not local, chicken was baked and not cut, and, and, and cut. So you gotta know uh, what industry is doing to you before we give it uh, to the kids. Minnesota, uh, wh which I was visiting one time for one of our conferences, uh, really had a pretty good system. Uh, and I, I, I could see that, but still, uh, in the end, they didn't win out because they were giving kids a lot of milk products. Uh, and. Um, We need to mirror, not transform it, good food. We need to transform the food. If it's selectively appropriate, the concerns of the environment and food movements, we have to respect the environment too, okay? Uh, uh, while uh, uh, t tethering to transfer even more regulation control of the food system, don't give them more control. Take away the control. And um, the U.S. government has played into the hands of, of companies. Yeah. And, and I'm sure it's through lobbying, money's involved here, okay? And uh, 
and Ann Cooper was saying, our students are, cook, uh, are cooking their own food, um, powerful leaders. Michael Pollan is leading the way. I encourage you to read his books. Um, uh, and, uh, and actually, I have one of his books here with me, uh, but he has many others. Omnivore's Dilemma is a great book to read, and, uh, and he is one. Michael Pollan, uh, author of Omnivore's Dilemma, Food Rules, uh, I think it's really great. Unfortunately, there's 130 rules, and I can't uh, go through uh, all of them for you. And, uh, but I'll read you a couple of them. Avoid food products that make health claims. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> okay. But yes, on 38. And uh, here's a good one. Shop the peripheries of the supermarket and stay out of the middle. Well, we all, most of us know that one uh, by now. You want sugary foods, uh, go in the middle. But I, I enc highly encourage you to read The Omnivore's Dilemma and, and these 130 food rules. I may make one of these TV shows completely out of these food rules. Yeah, I promise you I'll do it. <laughs> It'll then be on YouTube. Uh, we all need help. I'm, I'm just learning. If you disagree with me, look me up. Sit down with me, buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, I'll even buy you lunch. And, and I, but you gotta know what you're talking about. There's 2,000 books in my basement, okay? And uh, uh, so, uh, so, but you know the cafeteria work. I remember I talking about the ladies that are underpaid, working part time for many of them. It's a second job. Um, uh, they're working in the prison of love. Let's make it that. Okay, let's let them be knowledgeable. Let them teach our children how to cook. Let them maybe take one of the 20 prescriptions every day, different one, uh, and, and they would learn, uh, learn behavior, proper eating at the same time. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? <laughs> at least that's my dream. And I'm not saying it couldn't come true, because remember, my information has gone out to India. I've got the Ukraine, Ukraine contacting me, and maybe eventually, locally, we could get these organizations that are surrounding us, uh, like public health, stepping up to bat. And uh, I even went to a public health state of Indiana years ago mm -hmm. with 20 books on diabetes. I wanted them to bring it out to the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they went to Jeremy Adams, who then became the Surgeon General appointed by Pence. Mm -hmm. He didn't call up Rudy and say, Rudy, he is a chauffeur, go around the country and tell him how to get rid of diabetes. No. Then I saw on TV that he announced he is diabetic. Then I heard his wife, he said it, had cancer. Mm -hmm. And you can guess the part of the body. And it uh, could have been prevented. This is what I'm saying. I'm sorry for being a bit forceful, but I'm trying to change the message. I'm trying to change the message. Uh, our children are very important. We're caring for our children, okay? So we must start a real food movement. Uh, uh, and the cafeteria uh, uh, must take the central stage. That's where we teach cooking proper food. Maybe hook them to our own garden. Every empty lot may be in the part of the city where buildings are falling down or businesses are closing. We could build a garden. And, uh, and some people are doing that. Some of that's occurring in Fort Wayne. And um, so I say let the students learn to cook and take the stage. I agree it's not just about food, but if we educate the students, they will be better educated. And, and so will be their classmates their friends. Maybe they need to teach their parents how to prevent and get rid of the diabetes which they have, which many have. They don't know it yet. Their sugar's not elevated yet. They haven't checked their serum insulin. If they did, they found out, heck, I'm diabetic. And it makes it easier to change because you've got to lose less weight. It's not that hard. Look at my YouTube shows. Rudy Cashman, YouTube. 700 TV shows. You just go through there and pick out the ones you want to watch. They're from narcotics to, to marijuana to proper eating to getting rid of uh, di diabetes. So uh, re 
s their respective food and fellow classmates and their behavior will improve too. Teach them uh, uh, proper behavior, which is a uh, part of it. None of this free milk, that's got to go. But the majority of school lunch programs have free milk for, Wayne gives you, gives you that uh, choice. Uh, but you gotta pay for the water. I, I, it's not believable. Drink all the water you want. Drink some water every, every day. You know I do, and uh, so uh, the big food has has a new profit play. Okay, the, the, they created a false organic standard, but was it organic? Was it real or was it clean? Compromise can convince us it's clean, even although it's full of chemicals, and it's sold like anything. And uh, so i like to summarize here a little bit. Um, I apologize, but I don't apologize for being a little bit forceful. What's at stake? Serious illnesses, dying 20, 30 years before your time, being disabled in the last 20 years. Yes, there are parts of this country like Los Angeles and near Loma Linda University where Seventh-day Adventists are, are eating better type foods and they're living 10, 15 years longer. And, and uh, the books that are written from there, uh, Ashazi would be, be uh, one of them, it says barely 20 miles away, there's the edge of Los Angeles. They have, have found that uh, they can hardly find anybody that is over 70 years old. But from their race, their ethnicity, no. Type of food they're eating, what they're feeding them at lunch, yes. So join me in, in this uh, war of love, <laughs> and maybe we can turn uh, th things around. Come talk to me, tell me things, look at my YouTube shows, why am I doing this? It's for free. Uh, it's because I'm a doctor. I'm trying to change things. Okay, <laughs> I do this because I love you, I care about you, and join me in this war. I need more soldiers. <laughs> Namaste. Thanks a lot.